On point tonight, sometimes the media narrative doesn't exactly match the fat pattern, fact pattern. And that might be what's happening in Kansas City with the shooting of a 16-year-old teenager who was shot after he rang the doorbell at the wrong home. The victim, Ralph Yarl, thankfully survived the shooting. We understand he's going to be okay. He's also since become a victim of national status. President Biden called the teenager on Monday, and national networks have been breathless in their coverage of the case. It is so offensive when people try to justify shooting unarmed black people, especially our young children. Two neighbors rejected him. The third neighbor told him to lay down. We only know what, what Ralph described to us, and it was really being treated like a criminal by the community around him. We should have protected, and that this system has failed to protect, that our politics have failed to protect, and you deserve better than that, um, and that no gun is worth your life. Yet a few hours ago, the shooter, Andrew Lester, pleaded not guilty to charges of shooting Yarl. Lester's attorneys say the 84-year-old thought Yarl was breaking in, a defense not widely accepted, as you can see, by the national media. But one of the great things about our justice system is that we are to be judged on the facts and not the narrative. Missouri law includes both stand your ground, you have no duty to retreat before using deadly force in self-defense, and castle doctrine, the legal notion that your home is your castle. And individuals have the right to use reasonable force, including deadly force, to defend their home and to protect themselves against an intruder in their home. In other words, self-defense is not only protected in the show-me state, but in a way celebrated. Criminal defense attorney Scott Rosenblum is Missouri's premier criminal defense attorney, represented a number of self-defense cases, and joins us now. Uh, if you listen to the media narrative, this is an open and shut case, right, that, that this 84-year-old should spend the rest of his life in prison. I'm wondering if it is that simple. Now, it's clearly not that simple, Leland. Uh, Self-defense is very fact-specific, and it's going to be a, a come down to a determination of what, what is reasonable and what a reasonable person would believe under the same or similar circumstances. So, as you pointed out, uh, stand your ground, castle doctrine, it doesn't give you carte blanche to just shoot, but it does uh, make it so that you're not going to be the initial aggressor, you don't have any duty to retreat, and then it comes down to whether or not your response was reasonable under the circumstances, whether or not this gentleman was reasonable in his fear that he was about to be uh, um, in danger of serious bodily injury or death. If so, then self-defense would apply, and it would be incumbent upon the state, the prosecutor, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did not act in self-defense, and that's an important fact. So, in other words, it would be incumbent upon the state to prove that uh, if he was a, somebody, a reasonable person, awoken at night uh, to someone either ringing the doorbell or, as we've heard now, potentially, you know, trying to open the door, would not have been in, in reasonable fear. I think about the way the narratives have changed uh, and the way the narrative didn't exactly match what ended up with, with the outcome of the case. George Zimmerman, uh, who killed Trayvon Martin, acquitted. Darren Wilson, who killed Michael Brown, that was in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, remember, that's where hands up, don't shoot began. Turns out uh, Michael Brown's hands were, were not up. They were inside the police car. Darren Wilson was not charged. Um, William Rohde uh, shot and killed uh, Ahmed Arbery. And that was a self-defense case, except Arbery was chased down outside, not in anybody's home. And I'm, I'm wondering how much, of, how much harder is it for prosecutors uh, that this man uh, was awakened at his home and was in his home when this all happened? Well, yeah, that's going to be a big issue in the case, and it's going to be up to a jury to determine what was reasonable or not, um, and it's going to be very fact-specific. I mean, you've heard two narratives already. Was this, was this uh, teenager actually trying to get into the home? I think that's what the accused is saying. Or was he just standing there? So obviously, you know, you have to be, it has to be a reasonable belief. Now, the other thing in the self-defense instruction is your belief doesn't have to be true. It doesn't hinge on whether or not he was right or wrong, whether his, whether his belief turned out to be accurate. As long as he reasonably believed it, he was entitled to use self-defense. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.